welcome to NALO. My name is Tracy Kay. In today's episode, we're looking at cyberbullying. What it is defined as, what the law says about it, and everything in between. Now, bullying is a very serious issue that is happening in our communities. However, cyberbullying is defined as the use of the internet or mobile technologies to cause harm, intimidate, or harass someone else. Now, there's a reason why I tell you cyberbullying is on the increase and rampant in our communities. It has very many problems associated with it. However, the most prominent is the toll it has on one's mental health. Now, there is a saying that goes, internet is forever. Because everything, every statement, every image we put out there is permanent. And this has the implications of causing a lasting impact or influence on one's reputation, especially a young person's life. She's the, She's one. the one. But she doesn't. But Is she the same one. person? Yeah, and you seeing the face. <laughs> <She's> the one. <laughs> She didn't open. Maybe she's in her room. Maybe let me go and first try in her room again. what happened to Angel to the extent that she thought about taking her own life because of cyberbullying. Now this could happen to you or myself, any of us or a loved one 
could be facing this very scenario. I'm joined by a team of youth to further discuss what their tech is on cyberbullying. I'm joined by Kanan Arinda, Arine Tohana, and Sandra to discuss further cyberbullying in their opinion. Thank you guys for joining me on set. Oh, thank you very much for having us. Oh, you look, um, I am now afraid um, because cyberbullying takes different forms and I was about to unleash a compliment. Now I'm not so sure anymore. Um, but I wanted to find out from you guys. Um, Cyberbullying, right? What does it mean to you? How have you experienced it, if you have experienced it, for example? Okay. Yes, Should I'll start fast? with you, Kanan. Yes. Uh, well, I think that cyberbullying is attacking someone, either emotionally, uh, physically, or the likes, but doing that online, doing it on an online platform. So if you uh, maybe are coming against how I look, body shaming, uh, online gender violence and all the likes, as long as it's an intentional attack on me that uh, will end up with negative results and you're doing it online, then for me that's what I understand as cyberbullying. Cyberbullying, online. Um, he talked about online. It has to be harassment but it is done online. online. Um, Hannah, do you agree with that definition? Um, yes, entirely. Because if it's not online, then that can be cyberbullying. Maybe that we could call that maybe bullying. Um, but it's basically um, sending out negative information about somebody. And it has to be um, aff affecting them either psychologically, physically, emotionally, and could live with rather deadly effects. Yeah. Interesting. Sandra, I would really like to get your opinion as well. When it comes to cyberbullying, what would your understanding of that be? Well, when it comes to cyberbullying, we realize it's cyber and bullying. So cyber in itself means technology. Phones, uh, laptops, anything technological in that aspect. And bullying in the sense of, uh, it doesn't have to be about physical appearance. Sometimes it's about random things that we post, for instance, pictures, videos, or even at times the memes. Yeah, yes. talk about memes yes. or things that you see that are attractive to you, but to another person they are not, and then they decide to, you know, offer an inappropriate comment. Mm -hmm. So cyberbullying to me entirely is uh, something inappropriate that you say or do online. Not even online apps, even uh, the gaming apps. Yeah. Now, Sandra, actually, I'll stay with you. When you speak about that, um, have you experienced cyberbullying yourself? Uh, <laughs> maybe you want to share with us what you've experienced? Well, I have experienced cyberbullying, but I didn't take it seriously. I, I, I didn't take it seriously. We had gone out with a group of friends, you know, you take photos and all these things, so you post a certain picture on your Instagram and someone is telling you, hey, so you're the only dark one among the light. Ooh. And and you, you're you like, okay. You think about it, but then when you just, you let it go. Okay, for my case, I didn't take it seriously. And besides, I know who I am, so it didn't really affect me It didn't bother much. you. Yeah. Amazing. Um, Hannah, do you have a friend uh, or yourself that have experienced cyberbullying and what other forms have you, you know, been uh, able to yeah. see or not? Um, maybe I could start with the forms of cyberbullying. Uh, they can take different forms, honestly. Um, there is catfishing, there is trolling. I've been a victim of trolling. You know, you're trying to just push your dream and get where you want to be. I'm a journalist in the making. So, you know, um, you try to use what you have within your means to get out the content that you can, you can release within your means. But then there will always be trolls online saying you will not make it. You are not fit for TV. You're fat, you know? Um, but at the end of the day, I think it goes back to knowing who you are and not letting such comments affect you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Kanan, have you been on the giving end or the receiving end of cyberbullying? So I think that one of the most unique aspects of me is that I have been on the giving end of cyberbullying before and I've also been on the receiving end of, um, of that coin. So yeah, I know exactly, 
I know a lot about how it feels, but also I know a lot about sometimes what the cyber bully is aiming at and why yeah. they do that. Yeah, I've, I've done it and received it. Um, when, when we talk about giving, um, because I mean, they've shared, they've received and you know what that meant for them. I want to find out from you what would actually drive you to dishing um, a form of harassment or a form of you know trolling of sorts what what leads one into that kind of content well the first one is revenge it was very revenge driven you know someone had done something to me in person and I decided you know what I think that I'm going to take you on but I'm not going to do it in, in, in person because I don't want to end up in a hospital. So I'll do it online. And it worked, unfortunately. Uh, the other form um, was around clout generation. So sometimes content that you put online, people really like the mean stuff and they want that kind of content in order to get engagements and the like. So yeah, I have participated in bullying people all for likes yeah. you know but a third one which for me i think is the most critical one from the point of a cyber bully which i no longer am is not knowing that you are participating in cyber bullying so initially i bullied a lot of people online both men and women that is also needs to be clear um, although of course statistically women are more the targets of cyberbullying than men but men also get cyberbullied I have bullied both and uh, I think that many many times the cyberbully doesn't even know they are participating they're participating in, in a yeah. crime yeah. or the fact that it is a crime yeah. um, shockingly according to the law it's actually a crime but we'll get into that um, I just want to find out from Hannah um, what are some of the extremes that you've noticed out um, and when I say extremes I mean in terms of cyber bullying the person that you're bullying um, the toll the emotional you know toll it takes on them and the other forms are, you know are very evident what are some of the worst possible, possible scenarios, scenarios that could come from cyber bullying yeah so interestingly um, according to research, one of the best ways to torture a human being is not even physical torture, but emotional torture. Because as a human being, you run on um, your psychology, your mental um, capability. Uh, so I think uh, cyberbullying leads to so much, and I think the, more, the worst possible um, occurrence is suicide. Of course, which we've just seen. Which we've just seen in the video. Mm. Um, because somebody is, um, people, everyone has insecurities, first of all. So cyberbullies normally look at that specific insecurity that you could have, or maybe you could be thinking of. They focus on that, make it such a huge deal. You're already fighting with that insecurity personally. So you find so many people pointing fingers at that insecurity and you start to penalize yourself for that specific thing. So um, naturally, you're psychologically affected and you're like, you know what, I'm just going to end my life at this point. Yeah. Because if everybody can see that insecurity, I mean, who, who, who am, am I, I living for? Exactly, who am I living for? Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's something we should really talk about more. Surprisingly, people rarely talk about cyberbullying in Uganda. Yes. Yeah, it's yes. kind of like a normalized thing. Mm -hmm. Like you are bullied. Ah, man, those are just Twitter things. Yes. Those are just Instagram things. Like you can move on with life. But the most um, probable um, occurrence is taking your life. Interesting. Yeah. Your life. Um, you know, when you talk about extremes, and I've seen, you know, we all know that once it's on the internet, it's on the internet. Um, it's out there. It's not just the three of us that have probably shared yeah. it. It's everywhere. And um, Sandra, um, what could be the other scenarios that could play out just by an ordinary tweet or a click um, or a comment? Well, aside from death, I feel that one of the most hurtful is usually esteem. You know, as people, as, as she pointed out, as you people both pointed out, one of the, as humans, we all have insecurities. It could be my body, it could be the way I talk, it could yes. be the way I walk. So most of the times when you're bullied and your insecurity is pointed out, 
your esteem is affected. Your self-esteem, the way you hand, look at people, the way you interact is affected. For instance, let's, let's give an example. If someone posted a video about something, let's say, let's say they were talking about food and they were explaining all these things, and a user picked on the accent, not the food they are cooking, but the accent, the way they are talking. Definitely, your esteem goes, it, it crushes you. And then the other thing I, I believe cyberbullying affects is also your mental health. I believe in Uganda, we are still talking about mental health in, we're still talking about it in the, its earliest forms. We really don't understand a lot about mental health. I could be offering a comment, just saying, oh, you look chubby, oh, you've lost weight. And it's just a statement. It's not, and it's pointing out to mental health mm -hmm. and things. So I believe uh, cyberbullying affects one's esteem. And then also in relation to that, it affects their mental health, how they see things, how they perceive things, yes. and then also how they interact with people. For instance, if I talk about how you're dressed or how you talk, that is just me. But it affects the way you will see other people. Mm -hmm. you, you fear because, let's say, because ABCD said I sound like this mm -hmm. or look like this, it's even now harder for you to go out and see people. Yes. So that's um, very, very, yes, yes, Hannah. So it's not only um, psychological, but also physically. True. Um, a lot of things that happen on social media end up seeping into our personal, physical lives. I had a friend that would engage a lot on sexual harassment online. And uh, it was really bad. He would be dropping something sexual, sexually offensive, under people's posts. So um, when he went for an interview, of course, <laughs> he didn't get through. You know, because he was always the creepy kind of individual on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, if you're a cyber bully out there, um, this is not going to seep into your own personal life. Mm -hmm. Nobody is going to nobody is going to hire you exactly. if you are known for a certain kind of activity on your social media handles. Mm -hmm. And it, that goes same for um, the person that's been bullied as well. Uh, people look at that specific insecurity, maybe your figure, maybe your skin color. I so the next time you're <laughs> for the women, yes. and then next time you are maybe going for a meeting or a conference, people are going to be whispering like, oh my God, this this is like, like, she's the one. Like, I just have a question. Like, um, Kanan was so, you know, um, keen to share that he has actually been a part of both. Um, he has received uh, the bully and has dished it. Uh, but I want to find out, do women also, you know, go ahead to cyberbully? Kena, uh, please share. I, I feel Very like they, so. they feel I... they are victimizing. You yeah, know. which, <laughs> yes. again, statistically, yes, women are more prone to receive the cyberbullying. But I think the danger of that is then we kind of, again, label them the victim and they can do no wrong, mm. which is not the case. Because, yeah, I have been bullied by women uh, a lot, uh, actually. And... So something that we don't think so much about is around men and body shaming, you know? We, it's easy to identify when a woman is being body shamed, uh, a man not so much. And the, the normalized form of teasing and bullying is the issue. So for instance, one of the most common uh, forms of cyberbullying against the male gender online is height-wise. So short men, you know? And we joke so much about it, yeah. I mean, we normalize yes, it, and yes. we're like, ah, oh, you know, a short boyfriend somewhere is in someone's armpit right now, or, or like someone's short boyfriend, why am I giving examples? Anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm we not wouldn't gonna, know. I'm, yeah, uh, or, or like now, uh, amongst like bearded community vis-a-vis non-bearded community, yes. and there's this very, very common mm. meme mm -hmm. of this female journalist yes. that is interviewing two different men. Yes. One has beards and another doesn't. Has. And so they strategically got the clips of like, she's so happy talking to this guy with beards. And then this other one, she's like, mm. and they use that a lot against people. Okay. That, and they'll, go, yeah. And so I have been, of course, um, bullied in that regard. I have a lot of we, women who we. have shared me as their sister. Okay, Interesting. As uh, WCW. So <laughs> Very many people have shared, um, you know, points uh, to which they've been, you know, a part of, you know, the community that has been cyberbullied. I wanted to understand, do you understand the law around cyberbullying or where it falls? 
um, as you, you know, exchange on social media and, you know, the cyberspace, um, do you think you've, you have been equipped in any way uh, by, you know, the, the law um, on those social media apps or the law in general when it comes to cyberbullying? So I know that the, the two laws that fight against one another in the, in the battle of cyberbullying is the Computer Misuse Act, which is what most victims will be like, oh, you know, they're yeah, yeah. using this against me. And then on the other flip end, the cyberbullies are like, it's freedom of expression, which is also constitutional. So I know that those are the two laws, quote unquote, that tend yeah. to battle it out mm -hmm. when it comes to the cyberbullying mm -hmm. space. Yeah. Hannah, um, do you feel that as you you know, take part in the social media engagement um, and the cyberspace. You understand the laws that no. govern? Honestly, no. It's the last thing anyone would think about as they are tweeting something or maybe um, harassing anybody in any way online. Like, people don't care. I, I, personally, it's the last thing I think about. Unless, of yeah? course, you're attacking the big gun. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they like. like I might end up in jail. Exactly. It's, it's really yes. the last thing people think about. Uh, Sandra, do you understand, for example, Instagram and, and all those? No. I you just sign a group? No, I think the thing that uh, he talks about the Computer Misuse Act and freedom of expression, I think for most users, the only thing that we look at are the policies. And to see, for example, if it's Twitter, you're like, am I going to be banned? Is my account going to be suspended? Those are the only things we think about. We don't, we don't take time to understand the law and things of that sort. The only yeah. thing that is in your mind is, have I violated any policy? Have I violated any Anyone, rule? Is my account yes. going to be banned? True. Those are the only things we think about. So yes. about the laws, no. Interesting. Yeah. Guys, as you share this, um, I, it's, it's very evident that you know, we are pretty much quick to just say, I agree. I agree to this. I, as long as I get the app. You know, and then what I do with the app is a different thing. Until, of course, you end up in jail or in some form of, um, what, what is that? Your Twitter account is tech banned. And, 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 <laughs> and then you're like, I should have paid attention to my language or I should have, you know. Uh, but Yes. Uh, you're like, oh, I should have. Or um, for those that have ended up in jail, who have attacked bigger people, apparently. Um, you don't want to be, you know, on that receiving end. I want to find out from you, what would you rather have done differently when it comes to the law and how it manages, you know, the space that is the cyber? <laughs> uh, when it comes to the law, I see, I see the microphone is moving around. Like, Kanan, what would you rather have done differently? Especially because you've been a part of both the sides of the coin. Um, what would you, because someone's saying, don't mess with my freedom of expression. And another person saying, no, you've way gone past your freedom. Um, what would you rather have done differently? I think that there's need to have more clarity when it comes to the way that the, long, the law speaks, huh? the constitution speaks yes. about some of these things. Because there's a lot of loopholes that are left in there. And when you hear, for instance, the people that use the Computer Misuse Act thing, they will turn almost anything into computer misuse. And they, because it's, it's not, like there isn't really that much clarity on that. But all, the same applies to freedom of expression because there's so much liberty in that department. So I think that when, by the time the computer misuse, by the time the freedom of expression um, part of the constitution was being put into place, uh, I don't even think social media was a thing mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. And yes, it has been revised a couple of times, but vaguely. Then comes the Computer Misuse Act, which comes into place where in, in the very early days of social media and it hasn't really been defined that much. Mm -hmm. And from that perspective, the, even the lawmakers themselves don't, I think, I feel, don't understand these platforms so much because you have a member of parliament that has 2,000 followers or even less going up what on the floor to, to <laughs> discuss and debate these important aspects. No, yes. it doesn't work that yes. way. So one of the things that needs to be worked on immediately is clarity down to the detail of that. And um, 
Also for the social media apps, these are money-making entities, so they don't really mind that much. They, they know they can ban a few apps. But I think that when an application is being created and someone is signing up, I think one of the simple things that they should do is give the person that policy to read through, but before actually starting, give like a simple test about the policy yes. that you've done yes. before someone can, because I don't I, think anyone truly. like reads through that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Exactly. Okay. I only know one individual, just one individual in my entire life mm -hmm. who, who reads, yeah, he reads through yes. everything and he is so aware beyond of, of even what the, what the owners says. of the app think. Yeah. I, I think he has a, a job cut out for him. I yeah. think he needs to do like a master class on policies. Yeah, like, uh, because if, if, honestly... If for instance such an individual is, is called... Parliament has that um, time when they can let citizens come on board and really give their minds opinions. I think that they need to get such individuals, such people to come and help in uh, the policy making, policy reviews and acts and uh, all those parts. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hannah, um, what would you rather the law do um, to sort of cu cup down this very dangerous vice that leads to um, the lives of Angel committing suicide? Yeah. I think it still goes back to understanding what the law says about cyberbullying, about freedom of expression. I think in my uh, A level, uh, I did history three and there's somebody called Napoleon Bonaparte. He said, freedom is not for everyone. I hope I won't be stoned for that. Yes. But even the law has limitations for freedom of expression. So I think people need to understand that as well. And um, if we could maybe have more engaging discussions about understanding how, what exactly the law says about cyberbullying, about how to use media, then maybe you could have less of such actions happening on social media. Mm -hmm. Sandra, your last take um, about what you would rather have done differently to help reduce or actually cut down this whole vice. So uh, for me, I would sum it up in one word, sensitization. Sensitization to the government, because you realize these things exist, these laws do exist, but people don't understand things. For, for instance, you talked about the Computer Misuse Act, mm. and you realize people don't even know that there is a Computer Misuse Act Absolutely. that exists. So I believe government has to do, do a lot of sensitization. If it's possible, we could also have uh, different organizations, civil society, also take on the aspect of sensitizing the society. Mm. Because some of these things, eh, some of these things are people just testing you. There are comments that are put out there to test, like to poke you, to see if you will react, if you will do something, if you will do so react in a kind of way. So I believe there's a lot of sensitization that has to be out. Then the other thing is uh, community leaders, church leaders, they have to sensitize people and teach them to know and accept who they are. I believe most of the times, caught me, I believe most of the times why people take offense to these things is because they don't know who they are. For instance, if I know I am dark skinned and I am this kind of person, I refer to that a lot. If I know I am dark skinned and I am this kind of person, regardless of what you say, I already know it is who I am. Yes, to you it looks like a weakness, but to me it is who I am and I can concentrate on other strengths without looking at my darkness. So I believe in, we can talk about situation, we can spend the whole day government and all these things, but also as individuals at the end of the day, we also have to take precaution, we have to take safety, we have to understand who we are. For instance, let's say if someone, as he said, your beard less, and you know you have something, I got you, it's a got <laughs> yes, you, I yes. must say. You, you won't take offense to it, you're like, um, okay, that's what you think, and it's not me. Yes. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Very, very uh, big insights right here. I feel like the next policy they draft, uh, they need to call um, the youth. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for being a part of uh, this discussion, and perhaps maybe your last message to the youth out there that are on this cyberspace and engaging in the likes of cyberbullying, um, your last message for them. No, can I have the question again? Yes. Uh, no. Your last message 
You look into that camera and package your message to stop cyberbullying. All right. Um, for me, I'm a very big advocate for change, starting with you and I. Um, I would love anybody out there to put themselves in the shoes of somebody that is being cyber bullied or somebody that is being harassed in any form. Um, think about how what you're going to say, what you're going to type is going to affect somebody else. Or maybe look at you being in that position of being harassed online or being cyber bullied online. How would you feel? How would you um, ex take that experience? Um, but if you and I can actually understand that we can save somebody's life or we could save somebody's mental health or we could save somebody's, um, somebody's self-confidence, I think then we wouldn't have um, a lot of these cyberbullying cases. So it starts with you and I to understand that um, we need to have more positivity. There is so much negativity online, honestly. If three of us here could just add a bit to that positivity, we could change someone's life. Yeah. Kanan, um, I will let you have the message for policymakers um, on this cyber bullying space and the cyberspace. Your message to the lawmakers, to the policy makers of this country and the world uh, to help curb cyber bullying. Yes. Okay, so I believe that cyber bullying, much like any other form of crime, is bound to exist because human beings can be some really terrible people all together um, but as we fight to try and individually end it as policymakers there is need to clarify some of these things there is need to be a little tougher on some of these um, individuals punishing someone who has cyber bullied will be incentive enough for the next cyber bully to think twice before they jump into that action. But if it's vague, if the policymakers don't understand anything that is happening, we're going to keep letting the streets, as we call them, run wild. And people are going to keep getting harmed physically, emotionally, and psychologically. Thank you so much. Sandra, yours is simple. You have two questions to ask our lawmaker. Um, I want you to look into that camera and ask your two questions to our lawmakers about cyberbullying. Uh, number one, do they, number one, as a policymaker or as a legislator, do you understand cyberbullying? Do you understand it to the detriment of those that use it and those that create the apps? Then the second question I would ask, the second question is, um, what do you think needs to be done to control cyberbullying, especially in Uganda? Yeah. Then the other thing, just to add on what these two said, uh, the other thing is uh, as users, we also have to take precaution. Life is short. That tweet or like is something that uh, makes your day or brightens your day, but uh, we have to be careful online. Thank you so much to Sandra, Hannah and Kanan for being a part of this discussion about cyberbullying. Thank you so much for keeping it here with us on Nello. Wait a second, we'll be right back with our lawmaker to make sure you understand what the law actually says about cyberbullying. Now, it's not a complete Nalo show if we don't have a lawyer to further put this in context. What does the law say about cyberbullying? We are joined by a lawyer to further discuss this and help us understand what the law says about it, especially the Computer Misuse Act of 2011. So under our laws, cyberbullying uh, falls under three instances. The first one is cyber stalking. Uh, the other form is cyber harassment and of offensive communication. Those are prohibited behaviors which are provided for under a law called the Computer Misuse Act of 2011. So to begin with, the Constitution provides for freedom of speech, that you are able to say whatever that you want. But the law later on goes ahead to the Constitution, of course provides for that right under Article 29 
of the Constitution that every Ugandan has a right to say whatever they deem fit. But that right is not absolute. Uh, in law, we say that it is derogable, it can be limited by the state. And that is why uh, Parliament, in its wisdom, enacted the Computer Misuse Act of 2011. So the Computer Misuse Act provides for those three instances uh, uh, which someone could term as cyberbullying. So the first one we said it is offensive communication. So with offensive communication, uh, this is where, say, you put up a tweet say that someone is, uh, is, 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 you defame some person or you, you speak particular information that is not true. So that is what we call offensive communication. You offend someone. That is provided for under Section 25 of the Computer Misuse Act. Then the other part of cyberbullying is what the law terms as cyber harassment. Uh, this is where you, you annoy a person using internet. Let me just give an example with cyber harassment. You, you send unsolicited information uh, to some other person. Uh, you keep on sending information. You, you threaten their life, for example. So you, in a way, you offend someone using information. Uh, so we talked about uh, cyber harassment, we talked about offensive communication. So the last part is what we call cyber stalking. Cyber stalking, this is where you infringe someone's privacy. Uh, you, you, you take pictures of them without their authorization and thereby you are breaching their right to privacy. Uh, you are taking pictures of them uh, without their authorization. And that is just one part of cyber stalking. Yeah, so those are the three forms of cyber harassment. Offensive communication, cyber harassment, and cyber stalking. All those three compound to cyber bullying. The first law is the Constitution itself. Um, Article 27 provides for a right to privacy. So the Constitution guarantees that a person, uh, that person's life should be protected, is absolute. So the Constitution provides for that right that you have a right of privacy. The other law is the Computer Misuse Act, and I've talked about those three offenses under that law. So they, uh, they provide that the person's right to privacy or uh, uh, someone's right against cyberbullying must be protected. And those three instances are actually offenses uh, uh, where someone can actually be uh, prosecuted under courts of law and either convicted or appeated. Uh, the other law is a law we call the Data Protection and Privacy Act. That law provides that any person collecting personal information or personal data of another person must uh, keep it within the confines of, of the law. So let me just give an example. Airtel goes ahead to to, to give out your personal number or personal data, maybe your messages, uh, or maybe WhatsApp. WhatsApp uh, reveals your, your communication with other people. So the Data Protection and Privacy Act provides that such information must not be shared with third parties unless it is with your consent. As you see, the Computer Misuse Act of 2011 came after uh, internet penetration had been so high. Uh, we have the recent statistics 
I think about 14 million Ugandans own uh, a smartphone. And so that means that there is a lot of, um, a lot of breach of privacy by other persons. And that is why Parliament in its wisdom enacted this particular law uh, so that one, people's personal information can be kept to them unless it is put out with their consent and also to prevent people from abuse. For example, we have instances like uh, sharing a child's information with other persons and which can compromise their security. Yeah, so with the high internet penetration, Parliament had no option but to, to enact a law that prevents against cyberbullying. Just like any other law, it has stakeholders who are in charge of implementation. So with the Computer Misuse Act, as you saw, it provides for, it provides for, for particular offenses. So the first stakeholder is the Uganda Police Force. Now the Uganda Police Force under CID, under the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, they have a department called uh, the Cyber Misuse Department. And the Cyber Misuse Department makes sure that it conducts all the investigations upon a complaint and then they forward the file to the Directorate of Public Prosecutions, and that is the DPP. The DPP, these are state lawyers that prosecute such offenses before courts of law. So the first person we've seen is the Uganda police falling under the CID, the Directorate of Criminal Investigations. Then the second stakeholder is the DPP. The DPP is the Directorate of Public Prosecutions and it's an office charged with prosecuting all offenses in Uganda. Uh, and then the other stakeholder, of course, is the judiciary, where courts lie. So courts make sure that they evaluate the evidence that has been presented before the DP, uh, by the DPP and then either convicts or acquits. Then we have another office that is charged with, um, with protecting personal information or personal data, and that is uh, the Data Protection Office. The Data Protection Office falls under NITA. NITA is the National Information Technology Authority. It's provided for by the NITA Act, and their role is to make sure that bodies or institutions keep personal data in accordance with the law. Remember, I told you about the National Data Protection, the Data Protection and Privacy Act. And so the Data Protection Officer, which falls underneath, that makes sure that such information is kept within the confines of the law. Under the Computer Misuse Act, as said, it provides for particular offenses and also provides for, for how they can be prosecuted. So under the Magistrate Courts Act, uh, it provides for certain uh, courts. It provides for Magistrate Grade 1, it provides for the Chief Magistrate's Court, provides for Magistrate Grade 2 Court, and then the Constitution uh, provides for the High Court. So under the Computer Misuse Act, it, it provides that such offenses shall be prosecuted by courts of judicature. So courts of judicature are, we have the High Court, we have the Chief Magistrate's Court, we have the Magistrate Grade 1 and Magistrate Grade 2. So to determine which court should prosecute which offense, uh, that is determined by the criminal jurisdiction of a particular court. So, uh, depending, on, depending on the punishment, 
then informs which court should handle such offense. I told you that the Constitution provides for freedom of speech. That is under Article 29 of the Constitution. But the same Constitution provides for a right to privacy under, Section 20, under Article 27 of the Constitution. Now, I told you that the right or the freedom of speech is not absolute. In a way, it can be limited by the state, and that is why uh, we, uh, Parliament, enacted the Computer Misuse Act. But there is a balance that must uh, be negotiated. Uh, so, in in about 2005, we had a case which was determined by the Supreme Court, and the, the case is Charles Onyango Obo and Andrew Mwenda versus Attorney General. Uh, Justice Moringa, as he then was Justice of the Supreme Court, uh, gave the leading judgment. And in his wisdom, he said there must be a balance. People must be given a right or, or the freedom of speech must be enhanced. But also, it must not be breached. And so, people must be aware that um, Whereas the law provides for freedom of speech, it equally has limits. Your freedom of speech must not interfere with another person's peace. And so um, courts then will have a duty to make sure that they strike this balance. It's, it's, uh, it's not an easy one, but as courts try to interpret and strike a balance, they also then look at the victim. How has the victim been affected by the cyber bullying? So there is no black and white standard. So we leave that to the courts to determine whether a right has been violated or not. So people must be aware or cautious on how they use their phones. Um, because you, you might make commit an offense in, in ignorance, and of course ignorance uh, is not a defense. So people must be cautious that as they relay information to the public using their phones or computers, they, they must be aware that they could commit an offense which could lead them to jail. So they must restrict information. Uh, you, you don't just maybe share someone's nudes uh, just because what you call revenge pornography just because someone either broke up with you or something like that so people must be aware that we have laws that prohibit such behaviors and it could lead them to prosecution and subsequently to jail an amendment i told you about the computer misuse act of 2011 which uh, um, Parliament is seeking to amend uh, with the Computer Misuse Amendment uh, Bill of 2022. So that particular act provides for an offense called hate speech. Now hate speech, uh, that particular provision if enacted could be unconstitutional because hate speech in whose eyes uh, I could put up something that could seemingly annoy you but could be within my right of freedom of speech. So that particular provision could be unconstitutional because hate speech is too subjective. As you go through your Twitter feed or, or Facebook feed, you'll have so many things that will annoy you as a person uh, or maybe that you could determine as hate speech but could not be. So Parliament should also try to strike uh, a balance between people's freedom of speech and its limitation. Yeah, thank you. Now, according to a separate poll that was conducted August 30th in 2019, 
of about 4,057 new reporters aged between 15 to 24 years of age. 40% say they had experienced online bullying. Now, of these, 61% of them had experienced this on social media, especially on Facebook.